In Tunisia, millions of voters have turned out for the country's first free and transparent elections. It's the next step in Tunisia's transition to democracy, which began when a popular uprising overthrew President Ben Ali in January. That event triggered a wave of protests in North Africa, leading to last week's death of the Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi. But as Libya's National Transitional Council continues its quest to rebuild, questions are being asked about the manner of Gaddafi's death. John Stewart reports. Freedom is declared in Tripoli and then again in the rebel base of Benghazi as Libya celebrates. Libya, Libya. <laughs> but as the party continues, the debate about the death of the former dictator Muammar Gaddafi intensifies. The commander of the unit which captured Gaddafi says they did everything to keep him alive. We handed him over to the ambulance and he was bleeding from his head and there was blood in his abdomen. But it was a matter of moments, so we barely concentrated where exactly he was bleeding from. But it is clear from the pictures that there was bleeding on his clothes, in the chest and abdomen area, and blood dripping on his face. But he was alive. The official government line is that Gaddafi was caught in crossfire. But there is growing international pressure for some kind of explanation. It's now nearly four days since Gaddafi's death, but his body has yet to be buried despite the Muslim tradition requiring burial within 24 hours. And with the dead body on public view at a commercial freezer in Misrata, there appears to be no rush to have him interred. The country's chief forensic pathologist says that the autopsy has been completed, but he can't reveal his findings until the Attorney General gives his approval. Meanwhile, the National Transitional Council is beginning the monumental task of forming an interim government and rebuilding the shattered country. And the head of that council, Mustafa Abdel Jalil, has given a clear indication of its future direction. We, as an Islamic state, have taken on the Islamic Sharia as the basic source of law. Therefore, any law that contradicts Islamic principles, Islamic Sharia, will be an invalid law. Among the changes are a cap on bank interest rates and increasing the number of wives that Libyan men will be able to take. But for most people, the main issues are more immediate. We hope they will work to build a state based on institutions and law and which will be a just state. I want them to build a state which has health care services, education, everything that other countries have, because we really have nothing. They could do worse than once again look across their western border for inspiration. Nine months after an uprising that ousted their dictator, Tunisians have voted in their first free elections. Many waited in the sun for hours to cast their votes at 9,000 polling stations around the country. Officials say there was a voter turnout of more than 90 per cent. The first time in our life we have a true and uh, clear elections. More than 100 new political parties are vying for seats in the 217-seat assembly. The new assembly will appoint an interim government and draft a new constitution. John Stewart, Late Line.